Let's say you're scrolling through Instagram or ArtStation or Behance, and you see some art that stops you in your tracks. You take in all the little details, curious to learn more. Inevitably, you'll come across comments asking what tools were used. For example, what brush did you use? Or what render engine? Or what software was this made in? See, beginners often ask questions about the tools that were used in making a certain piece of art. But experts often roll their eyes at questions like, what brush did you use? And this is because the expert knows that the tool did not make the great art, but the artist did. Now, I completely understand where both the beginner and the expert are coming from. But if you're a beginner, I want to help you ask better questions. So let's look at some examples of tools and skills development. Now, when it comes to traditional painting, for example, the brush might make the artist's job a little bit easier. However, the fine motor skills that an artist learns while holding the brush will transfer to pretty much any other brush or similarly shaped tool. The same is true for skills such as seeing, understanding perspective, and mixing color. Again, the brush itself plays little role in the overall success of a painting. Now for analog skills such as carpentry, gardening, sewing, welding, things like that, the tools themselves typically play a small role in the outcome of the work compared to the strategies and skill of the user. So if a carpenter has to use a different drill than he normally uses, he'll still be able to get the job done with the same level of craftsmanship. Now, what about all of us who use computers all day? Today, many jobs rely completely on digital tools. One software may make a designer's job easier or faster. However, not all digital tools offer the same features and capabilities. And this is to be expected. Now, a carpenter doesn't cut a piece of wood with a hammer, they use a saw. Each task requires a specific tool. And in many cases, the same holds true for digital artists. Now, here's where things get a little bit interesting. Most people can learn to use a hammer, a saw, or another hand tool in a matter of minutes. As digital artists and designers, our tools consist of specific software for specific tasks. Unfortunately, it can and often does take years of dedicated practice to become proficient in any one piece of software used for digital content creation. And this is one of the reasons beginners ask questions about tools. When a beginner asks what software is used in creating a digital work of art, she's usually asking an entirely different question, one that goes something like this. Because I have limited skills, time, and resources, what software should I use to devote my time to learning in order to give me the best chance of creating as good of an artwork as you have here? But the beginner did not ask this question. The beginner asked what software was used. So with an eye roll, the expert says, software doesn't matter. Meanwhile, the expert has forgotten that he's already spent 15 years becoming proficient in a number of programs, allowing him to transfer ideas into images with relative ease. So if you're a beginner, be sure to ask questions that are specific and will help you make decisions to move forward toward your ultimate goal. And if you're the expert, remember you were once a beginner too. So help answer questions you wish you had answers to in the beginning of your journey. Now let's take a look at a few reasons why it's important to choose the right 3D software to learn. First of all, it may make it easier for you to be hired. If you wanna be an easy hire, then learn the tools a company is already using. The word pipeline is a term referring to the group of tools a company uses to see a project through beginning to end. The pipeline is refined to ensure seamless handoff between artists and departments. Having a refined pipeline ensures projects go smoothly, predictably, and within budget. If you come to an interview already using tools that are part of a company's existing pipeline, it makes you much easier to hire than say someone who doesn't. Next. It limits what you'll be able to create. So understanding the limits of a software is also quite important. In visual effects, many specific software are used for unique jobs. Fire simulations, water simulations, cloth simulations, architecture, automotive, game engines, 2D animation, character animations, additive manufacturing, 3D printing, sculpting, AR, VR. These are all examples of specialties that entire software have been written for. Now, some DCCs or digital content creation software 
will include more generic tools, and some will be narrowly focused and will excel in just one area. Understanding the limitations of a 3D application is important since you don't want to dedicate years to learning a tool, all to discover that you need to change software entirely to reach your goals. Now, in some cases, choosing a DCC that supports lots of third-party plugins can help mitigate this risk. Now, reason number three is it impacts abandonment rate. Have you ever decided to learn something new, then quit after just a few days or weeks? It's okay, I have too. Choosing a tool with a steep learning curve can increase your chances of quitting before you actually get good, especially if you're a beginner and or learning on your own. Choosing a software that isn't wildly above your skill level will increase your chances of sticking with it and becoming proficient. Finally, I recommend looking at the community of users of the software you're thinking of learning. Every 3D software has its own community of users, how they communicate, how open and encouraging they are, and what resources are available for beginners will largely impact your success as a beginner. Also, take a look at the level of and the kind of work being produced by existing users of the software. If you love what you see, and the work of the community gets you excited, then chances are you found your tribe. Learn the software. But let's say you're bored with the engineering-focused work coming from one software's community. Perhaps you want to create imaginative and immersive worlds for fantasy video games. Find out what software's community members are creating that kind of work. Once you adopt a software, there's a good chance you'll end up creating work fairly similar to what you see produced by that community of users. So here's some actionable tips you can use to actually narrow down and figure out what 3D software is right for you. First, I recommend narrowing down by industry. Now this is related to the whole easier to find a job bit I mentioned earlier. For example, if you want to create video games, then Unreal Engine is probably a better way to go than say Alias. Sure, you can create a car in both software, but Alias is used for producing physical goods with a focus on surfacing. Unreal Engine is used for creating real-time computer graphics and video games. So there's no sense in trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. Next, narrow down by learning resources. This is related to the point I mentioned above about abandonment rate. If there isn't enough official support or learning resources for a software, then consider this a big red flag. This makes it a lot harder to troubleshoot and learn new programs, especially on your own. On the other hand, some communities are so large and generous that there are endless tutorials and courses available. Making sure there's plenty of learning resources available will ensure that you stick with it and become proficient in the software of choice. And finally, narrow down by features. If you know there are specific outcomes you want to achieve with the 3D software, then be sure to research those features specifically. If you want to be a specialist that focuses on simulations, for example, and are torn between, say, Blender and Houdini, then Houdini might be the better choice for you. While Blender has support for some simulations, it's not the main focus of that tool. Houdini, on the other hand, is largely built around efficiency and power when it comes to simulating a wide range of materials and events. So if you want to access tools or features that don't seem to be supported natively by a software, then take a look at third-party plugins. 3ds Max, for example, may not have tools for everything you wish to do, but some quick research will reveal that many plugins are available for that software. These plugins extend the functionality of this tool. Not all tools have third-party plugin support though, so again, make sure to do your research. Finally, here's a few suggestions on what you should not choose software based upon. Number one is price. Especially if you have limited resources, it's easy to let price guide your decision. If you're a hobbyist, then perhaps this does make sense. But if you plan to become a paid professional, then price should not prevent you from choosing the right tool. If you end up creating good work, you will be able to earn more than your tools cost. And in many cases, the more specialized your work is, and the more expensive the tools you use, the more you can charge your clients. Next is operating system, Mac or PC. Lots of people have preferences in computer operating systems, and there are plenty of software that will only run on one operating system. While it may seem expensive or inconvenient to switch to a new operating system or buy another computer entirely, it's not nearly as expensive as wasting years of your energy and focus learning the wrong tools. Now, once you decide what you want to learn, commit to buying the tools to get the job done. Here's an analogy for you. Let's say you drive a small electric car. Then you become an independent contractor. You will likely need a large, powerful pickup truck for your work. So, you buy the truck. You don't simply change careers because you don't have the right tools. Finally, there's hype. 
Don't choose a software just because it seems to be popular. Every software will come and go. Some stay relevant longer than others, but technology evolves at a rapid pace. Fight the urge to choose a software just because you see it all over social media. Your career will hopefully span multiple decades. You don't want to build it on a foundation that's based on a fad or a fleeting hype. Trust me, I know how overwhelming it can be when you feel like you need to make a big decision like which 3D software to learn. Hopefully this video has given you some food for thought and will help guide you in the right direction. 